When a family member, friend, or loved one is going through something, whether that something be anxiety, depression, grief, or going through a breakup, we wanna do our best to be there for them, but sometimes we can't be there for them physically. Fortunately, new technology means new solutions, and we're able to comfort someone over text. But what is the best way to comfort someone over text? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Now, there are a lot of similarities between comforting someone in person and comforting them over text, but there are also some big differences. We can't exactly use our body language or give our friend a hug uh, when they might need it, so we're gonna have to find other ways to work around this and show that we're listening and that we care and to come up with effective solutions to help our friend or loved one through this. So to make this process a little bit easier, I came up <laughs> loving acronyms, I came up with a four-step method called the RUOK -okay method. So as you can see, this is a four-step process that you can use both in person or over text, but it's gonna be really important to do this if you're trying to comfort someone over text. Step one is to recognize the problem. Step two is to understand how to best help. Step three is to offer a listening ear. And step four is to keep it about them. We're gonna dive into each of these steps in further detail in the rest of this video. Step number one is absolutely crucial and it's to recognize the problem. That is, try and figure out what your friend or family member is going through in this situation. Are they feeling angry? Are they feeling frustrated, sad, anxious, depressed? Are they grieving? Are they struggling with a difficult breakup? This is where you try and pull that information by opening a communicative dialogue. Uh, some of the ways that we can do this is to simply ask, are you okay? Or how are you feeling? It's been a while since I checked in. Um, these are things that just open up an honest, direct line of communication that even if somebody seems fine on the surface, a lot of times our friends are gonna be going through things internally that might not be so obvious. So it's always gonna be appreciated when we reach out and just check in and make sure our friends are feeling okay. Or if they're not feeling okay, to try and understand what they're going through. Step number two is huge, and that's to understand how to best help. The fact is people cope in different ways, and even that same person might require a different kind of help depending on the situation that they're in at the time. Uh, the best way to know for sure how to best help somebody is to just ask, hey, how can I help you with this? What do you need right now? I'm here for you, etc." cetera. Um, the reason this is so important is because people are often, I find, looking for one of two things. They're either looking to vent or they're looking for solutions. And it's really just gonna be circumstantial. It's I don't think it's any one kind of person that always needs the same kind of help. I personally, there's times where I'm just venting and there's times where I really am looking for a logical solution to work through something. Uh, a buddy of mine were living out in Costa Rica a couple of months back, and this is one of my best friends, but inevitably, when you're living with somebody for months, uh, you guys do get on each other's nerves and you start to butt heads. So there were plenty of days where he would be feeling some type of way about something and he'd be venting to me, but I would make the mistake of giving him the wrong response. So he'd be venting, he just wants me to agree and validate his emotions but I would be offering logical responses. So he would want to, he would be saying something like, oh, Becky at the office is so annoying, blah, 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 blah. And he would want me to say, uh, you know, oh yeah, Becky, she's the worst. But instead I would be offering a logical solution, which wasn't what he was looking for. So he'd get more annoyed. I'd be saying something like, oh, well, why don't you just avoid Becky? Don't talk to Becky. Why don't you, Etc. So you see how there's a difference there. Uh, that would actually wind up irritating him more. Becky's not real, by the way. We didn't there, we didn't have an office in Costa Rica, but you get what I'm saying. Um, if somebody's just looking to vent, it's going to annoy them when you come up with a, try to come up with logical solutions. And then if somebody's looking for logical solutions and you're saying, "Oh yeah, Becky is annoying," and they're like, "No, tell me how I can deal with this. I, I don't want to talk to Becky every day." You know, people are going to be looking for different solutions depending on the situation that they're in. It's important to identify how you can best help. Are you going to be the shoulder to cry on or are you going to be the voice of logic, the voice of reason to help them find a solution to this issue? The only way to know is to ask. So me and my friend had a system where we would just straight up, I would jokingly, lovingly say, hey man, are we looking for solutions or are we just venting? And then he'd laugh and say, I'm just venting. And I know, okay. I'm gonna back off and not, not interject with any kind of logic. I'm just going to let him vent and I'm gonna agree. Uh, so really that's important there. 
try to understand the best way you can help in that situation. Step number three is to offer a listening ear by actively listening. Uh, because anytime we're trying to help someone, the only way we're gonna be able to get through to them and actually help is if they feel heard, if they know that you're actually listening to them. Now, this can be a challenge over text because we can't rely on a lot of our body language skills to show that we are actively listening. Those are things like eye contact or giving a nod every now and then just to show that you are listening and that they have your full attention. Uh, instead though, there are some other ways that we can show our active listening skills even over text. As you can see, uh, you can do things like asking specific questions, uh, paying attention, visualize what's being said, withholding judgment. Uh, obviously that attentive body language doesn't actually apply here, but um, yeah, we can demonstrate that active listening over text by just responding promptly and asking topic relevant and appropriate questions to show that we're actually interested in what this person is saying and that they have our full attention. And the fourth and final step of the are you okay method to comfort someone over text is going to be to keep the conversation about them. So throughout the course of a normal conversation, uh, conversation dialogue usually goes a bit like a tennis match. You know, you hit you say something, they say something. You say something, they say something. It's a, it's a back and forth where a lot of times we're kind of just waiting our turn to speak and planning what we're gonna say next in our head. This is not what you should do if you're trying to comfort somebody. If you're trying to comfort somebody, it's not a tennis match, it's, it's, you know, it's 80% from them, 20% from you, as opposed to 50-50. Uh, you wanna let them do most of the speaking and guide most of the conversation because this is their therapy session, not yours. Uh, if somebody is going through something, somebody's going through a breakup, the last thing they want to hear is you say, oh, I totally know how you're feeling. Last month when I broke up with Mark, I felt this way, blah, blah, blah. Nobody wants to hear that. Keep the conversation about them if you truly wanna help, and it's gonna be just a lot more impactful. So that's all I've got for the are you okay method, but I wanna give you guys three huge tips for comforting someone over text that are gonna just make this method a lot more effective for you. Tip number one is to ask if they'd like to talk. So obviously we've kind of touched on this already, but the best way to start that dialogue and to actually help someone is to just ask, do you wanna talk? What can I do to help, Etc. Tip number two is gonna dive into this a little bit further, and that's to volunteer specific help. It's great to ask how you can help, and it's great to let people know that you're there to help, but it's gonna be a lot more effective to volunteer specific help. Um, because most people just aren't gonna act on your, off your kind offer. Uh, they're going to be more likely to act on a specific offer. And I'll give you the perfect example of this. Uh, about a year ago, my cousin was hit in a hit and run accident and needed emergency brain surgery where he almost died. Uh, so this was, he's okay now, but this was a huge stress on the family. I was staying for a couple of days to help out at my aunt and uncle's place. And something I noticed that other people were doing that went a long way was volunteering specific help. Not just texting, how can I help? Or I'm here for you. They were actually doing things without being asked, such as the biggest one that stuck with me was that people were buying and delivering having food sent over every single day, like clockwork, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all paid for and sent over to them just to help out in one small way. This was specific help that made a big difference. It was a small gesture that went a long way because now my aunt and uncle didn't have to think about cooking three times a day on top of thinking about their son in the hospital. Uh, and I, so, Specific help stands out to me strongly as one of the best things you can do uh, if you actually want to comfort or help somebody out. Finally, tip number three is to avoid using cliches. Uh, things like everything happens for a reason or thoughts and prayers or it was just his time or it's all part of the plan. They're just kind of, in my opinion, presumptuous things to say because you're assuming that this person has the same worldview, the same religious beliefs or philosophies as you. And if they don't, um, it's just, it's gonna come across, come across a little bit, I would think offensive. Um, I know that if my son had just passed away, I don't wanna hear that it's all part of the plan. I don't wanna hear that he's in a better place now. Like, it's just cliche, it doesn't help me. It would probably frustrate me quite a bit. So I would avoid using cliches at all costs, especially if they're 
religious or spiritual in nature in a way that the person you're talking to might not agree with. Now, I'm not gonna keep you guys for much longer because we pretty much wrapped up the whole are you okay method there, but I do want to give you guys a couple of examples in various situations. So if you have a friend experiencing anxiety, grief, or going through a breakup, here are some examples of what I might say to help them through those various situations. Uh, so let's start with somebody going through anxiety. Uh, as you can see, when somebody's going through anxiety and you're trying to help them over text, you're gonna wanna help take their mind off of the worst case scenario because when we're feeling anxious, we're usually not thinking very logically. Uh, this is why I would use the are you okay method to figure out the best way to help. Most people who are feeling anxious will benefit from conversation geared towards positivity, logical thinking, and emotional distraction. Learning about anxiety will better equip you to help a friend who is experiencing it. Uh, but just in general, I would say uh, probably finding solutions and logic would help more with anxiety than just allowing them to vent. Uh, because allowing somebody to vent their anxiety can, can be helpful in some ways, but it also allows their anxiety to just keep running crazy as opposed to actually finding solutions to solving that anxiety. Next, let's talk about how to text somebody who is grieving. Uh, I would recommend not rushing a grieving friend through the process. Also, don't feel the need to combat the situation with logic the way we might with an anxious friend. Instead, you might invite your friend to share some memories about their dearly departed. Uh, while it can be bittersweet, celebrating the life and memories of a loved one who's passed away can be helpful. Uh, but like I said, just make sure you're giving them time to process those feelings. Uh, and you know, logic won't really help too much here because there's not that much logic to be had. It's it's just an emotional thing. So for the most part, you're, you're helping them to vent through it for most people. Uh, and then finally, what do you text someone who's going through a breakup? In these situations, the are you okay method can really come in handy. Uh, if someone has recently been cheated on, they might really just need to vent. But if the breakup was more complicated than that, your friend might need some advice. Uh, they might need a little bit more logical back and forth conversation and find a, a solution that helps them really process this. Uh, so as always, don't be afraid to ask someone how you can best help. Regardless of how you reach out to comfort someone over text, it's always going to be appreciated, but using the are you okay method can really help to make sure you're finding, recognizing the problem and finding the right solution uh, while making sure that you're actively listening and making the conversation about them. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the end. I know whatever friend you text uh, going through something is really gonna appreciate this time you put in uh, to learn these skills. And uh, if this was helpful to you, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below. As always, thank you for sticking to the end. I will catch you guys next time.